All right, now that we have our board, let's draw our snake. So I'm not going to see it, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to see about where I draw my snake. Now that we have a board, let's do draw snake. And we'll go to our draw function and we'll say draw snake. And I'm going to take out, uh, we know the draw is being called. I'm going to take out this line that we drew. We're not going to animate that anymore. And I can take out my delta x. And let's get draw snake. Draw snake. All right, so we'll see that I have a bunch of that down at the bottom. Bunch of pictures came in. Um, so, in order to draw a snake, we have to do. Oh, I just copied the draw function. I didn't want that. I want to draw a snake. There we go. It's probably confusing. There we go. Draw a snake. Oh, you can see. You can see what we're going to get to. We're going to clear the board, draw the board, draw the snake, draw some food, draw some foil field, draw some poison. So, so let's now draw the snake. So we can see that we have um, we don't we don't get anything in this function. So it's we're going to operate on things we already have, and so it looks like we're going to have a snake. That snake is going to have parts, and then we're going to call a function called map. Map just means take a function and run it over each thing that's in this thing called parts. So each thing that um, tells us that this parts is going to be multiple things. It'll be a list of things. In this case, it'll be an array of things, and it, on each element of the array, we're going to run this function. Now, this is a little bit tricky. This is a, uh, let's go back. This whole thing is an anonymous function. So we, we this is a variable part. And if there's more than one variable for your anonymous function, you have to do, you have to put it in um, parentheses. And then this is saying, take this argument and then this is the this is the body of the function, and all we're going to do is call draw cell with that part. So map will say I will call a function on every one of these parts, and I'll pass that function that part. So this will be each part will be passed to this function. We're going to call draw cell with that part and a snake color. So we're going to need that snake color, and I have that defined. Let's go to the top. Snake color is going to be white. And we're going to need draw cell. Draw cell. Now, what I've done is you might be wondering like, up here we said draw board horizontal lines. We made it very specific what that was being drawn. But here I'm just saying draw cell. That's very generic. And the reason is. We're going to, since drawing a cell is just drawing a square, as you can see in our in the game here, just that's a cell, and that's a cell, and that's a cell. Well, they're all squares. So we don't need a specific draw snake call and a draw uh, uh, spoiled food call and draw food call. They're all just the same shape with different colors. So we can just create one function called draw cell. We pass where we want to draw it. They're all the same size, so we don't need to specify the, the we just need the first point. We don't need the second one and we tell it what color. And in this case, it's going to be snake color. So you can see here, we pass in part. And in this function, we're expecting an object. This is object notation. It's saying this object has a field. Uh, one field is x, one field is y. And uh, so it'll look like this. It'll have this, how you, uh, you specify an object is with curly braces. And then a field, you give it a name. And then you give a colon, and you can specify values. So this might be 20, and then a comma, and you can specify another field, y, and this might be 40. That is now an object. And if I pass that object into a function, I can destructure it. So here we're using destructuring. So this object being, I'm expecting an object with a field called y, and a, a field called x, and a field called y. And now what JavaScript will do is it'll put that, it'll capture those values in my own fields called x and y. 
So I'm expecting an object to come in with an X value and a Y value, and I'm gonna capture those in variables called X and Y, and I'm gonna capture a color. So this, my parameter in the function is called color, whereas the value that I passed in was in a constant called snake color. So for each part, I wanna call this draw cell. I'm gonna set the X pixel of the cell to be the width of the cell times X. And now where is cell width? Let's go grab cell width. Um, oh, we already we already set that. That was in um, that was when we set up our canvas. We got the cell width. We've said however many number of cells we want. Divide the width of the canvas by that, and we'll, that'll give us the number of cells that we have. And so uh, now we know um, what. Or yeah, if we wanted tw if we wanted a certain number of cells, we divide the width by that to get the width for each cell. Now we have that, and we can just times it by the x. So wherever this snake part is, wherever its x is, we will, um, in order to get there, we need to multiply the cell width times the x. Now, this x is different than a pixel x. This is the x according to our grid. So when you're drawing the pixels, you, you specify pixel coordinates. So like pixel 0, 0 would be here, 0, 1, would, or no. Uh, this would be 0, 0, this would be 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, like really small. But what I'm doing with my snake parts is each of these grid cells is, this is this is uh, x0, y0, this is x1, y0, this is x1, y1, x2, y1, x2, y2, so, so on and so forth. So if I want to get in pixels over to a certain area, I have to say what the x coordinate is on the grid and what the y coordinate is on the grid, and I have to multiply that x by the cell width to get the number of pixels. So that's what we're doing here. So, and that's why I called it x pixel because I'm going from, uh, you know, snake part position in the grid to x pixel position, so I can draw it. And then I do the same thing with y pixels, and I set the fill style to whatever color I specified, and then I do another fill rect. Simple call. So I start at the x pixel, the y pixel, then I draw. Then my next uh, fill rect. Hmm. I was wrong. I have to clarify this fill rect, and this would be a good opportunity to go look this up. So let's let's do that. Let's go to um, MDN Mozilla Developer Network uh, fill rect. Let's go look at this. This is how you look up how these things work. Probably should have done this before. So. If you have a, we remember we have a 2D context from our canvas, and the official name of that is Canvas Rendering 2D Context, and I can call fill rect on that. So you can see what I was doing. I was calling context, and this is a Canvas Rendering 2D Context object, and I'm calling fill rect, and this documentation now will tell me what that function takes. So here's the syntax fill rect with x, y, and width and height. So I was wrong earlier, and this happens all the time. I had said up in our canvas setup that this, um, actually when we were drawing the board, I had said that, oh, when we are clearing the board, sorry. I had said that this was the x1, y1, x2, y2, it's not. This is x1, and then you, for x2, you add the width to whatever x1 was. This is y1, and then you add the height to whatever y2 was. So you get the same thing, but this is width and height. And so it kind of makes sense that it's called width and height. So now down here, when we draw, we can just say what the what the x pixel position was, the y pixel, and then just how wide we want to go, like how far to the right we want to go from that x, posi x pixel position, how far down we want to go from the y pixel position, and then that will draw one of those cells. So now, where do we get this snake parts from? Let's add in our snake. So let's go up here and we'll say, let's add a snake. So as I said before, we have these curly braces. And so we're going to, that's saying an object, we have a field, we have a colon. So this is the name of the field and we're gonna specify a value. Now what I, this square brackets denote is an, is an array. This will be like a list of things. So an array could be, you could say var my array equals one, two, three. And it doesn't, they can be heterogeneous. Bob, another object with field A is Frank. 
So you build up this array, this heterogeneous array of different kinds of things. But in this case, we want to keep them all the same because we're going to we're going to loop over them and pass them each to a function. So these are just points. Uh, it's an object that has an X field and a Y field. So it's an array of points. So parts is an array of points. So we have an object that has an array of objects and a direction. And this is going to be another, It's it looks like a point, but it's not really. It's saying that our direction is going to be go um, positive one in the X direction and don't move in the Y direction. So our first direction is going to say if we, if we're, if we go, if we go one in the X direction, we're going to the right. We go over here, and if we don't change our Y, we're going to stay in the same Y plane. So this direction would be going to the right. And so you could see that if we wanted to go, if we had X zero, we wouldn't move left and right. And if we had Y was one, then Y would go up and X would go down. If we had X one, Y one, then X would go over, Y would go, would go down. So that would be going diagonal. But we don't go diagonal in this game. We only go in the cardinal directions. So that's how we're going to specify our direction. And the reason we're doing that is because we can take a direction, we can just add it to where the snake is. So if we had x0, y0, and we, we went one in this direction, we would just add this direction to it. We would have x1, y1. We would have moved from 0, 0 to, to uh, 1, 0. So it's a convenient way of adding a, adding a value, calling it calling a direction a, a number of values to add to whatever part we have. So this is our first snake part. So you can see this is a list of the snake body parts, and there's only one. So our snake is only one body part long right now, and it's going to be drawn at 0, 0. I should be consistent there. All right, so we have our snake. We have a function call in our draw. Let's see, draw to draw the snake. And then we have our draw snake, which says now that we have snake was our object and in it had a parts object. And we're going to map over those objects in parts. And each one is going to go into this anonymous function called, it doesn't have a name, it's anonymous. And the part will be passed here. And we know that's going to be, this will be your X, you know, whatever, X1, Y0. That's what part is going to be. It's going to be an object like that. And then it's going to take that, that, so that's your arguments to the function. And then it's going to call draw cell with that part and snake color. And then draw cell is going to look like this. So let's save that, go back to our game, and let's try running that. So first of all, we, we don't see that line, and we do see our snake. So now our snake is being drawn. That's that, that thing in the corner there. So that's enough for now. So we, have, uh, we, ha we know how to draw a snake. And we know how to make objects, and we know how to use anonymous functions, and uh, we now have a correct understanding of how we do fill rect, and we know how to um, convert uh, grid coordinates in our game to pixel coordinates.